Good morning and welcome to our next installment of InMode's live stream educational series. It's really a privilege and an honor to be at Dr. Lisa Espinoza's La Chalet Medical Aesthetic Spa here in beautiful Bucks County, Eastern Pennsylvania. We have a regular team with Juana Cummings, who's in charge of clinical, Lisa Mettler, who's one of our co-producers of the series, as well as our production team, Ryan Windus and Justin Ross. Lisa, thank you so much for having us here today. Yes, yeah. thanks for coming. <laughs> Dr. Espinosa is too humble to say it, but we, she has incredible accolades, which goes back to her youth as a top-notch uh, classical ballet ballerina. Well, we mention this because I think it permeates everything that she does, professionalism, um, individual thought, uh, incredible discipline, and an eye for artistic, which kind of spills over and is, permeates your, um, your whole production of the uh, aesthetic spa that you have here in, in northeastern Pennsylvania. As a matter of fact, it's growing currently. You're going to open some new locations? Yes, uh, we have uh, three under construction. So. Terrific. Uh, Dr. Espinosa's practice <laughs> is a top, top, top 1% injector practice. She's a KO for too many numerous international societies and companies to mention, but suffice to say she has dedicated her professional life to education, devised her own clinical training program to maintain the highest um, uh, status of uh, efficiency and safety in her injector program, as well as as much sought after speaker on an international and national scale. Dr. Espinosa, take it away, please. <laughs> well, um, I hate not being able to look at you, but um, I know that the world is now a live stream Zoom, um, but honored um, that I'm being um, host in our office and I really want um, this day to be super productive for all of um, you viewers and taking your time out on a holiday weekend. Um, I really am blessed that I've got the dream team of InMode here and Juan and Lisa with all their clinical um, backgrounds on settings and so forth. Um, please send in your questions because I think it's going to be huge. Um, having the, all of them who flew in for this and Chris who's you know the god of body contouring and lipo and, and uh, um, plastic surgeon and has taught me so much so um, that we can answer questions not only on what we are demoing today but also just in general on a lot of the platform. Um, today's agenda is going to really be um, just talking about what how my practice has been successful um, in Embrace, Morpheus, um, and the Triton devices that we have. Um, and um, we'll, we'll be going through some of my pearls and some of the other clinical team, along with doing a live um, injection of face and neck, um, and also a body uh, Morpheus abdomen. And then just a quick armpit with Triton, even though I know most everyone's an expert on laser hair removal, I do think um, it's a great de device to just talk about for a minute. And then at the very end, we'll kind of go through um, some of the ROI and some of the financial components that I think that are always big questions on these live streams. So um, for now, we'll just go to a couple quick slides and just really talking about um, my philosophy on um, on uh, on on Morpheus. So um, we were super honored to find out that 2021 um, we had done the most um, Morpheuses in a lot of states on the tri-state area, and um, and I always attribute it and it really I got rid of the word provider because it's it shouldn't be used. I have an incredible team of PAs, MPs, nurses, um, medical estheticians, laser techs that, that really we collaboratively have had success with this. And, um, and why Morpheus 8? Um, a lot of you on this stream have already purchased Morpheus 8 and are really just looking for pearls on how to be more effective with it or how to be more successful and others maybe are trying to decide well gosh there's so many competitors now with microneedling RF and why, why Morpheus 8 and um, right now I think I have three of the devices um, two in one location because it's so busy it, it booked out all the time that we needed to get a second device for one location another location and then um, and then with all the other locations in construction um, it just still really has helped show that 
that it's, there's a lot of brand recognition. So when I first got it, we were probably one of the first to have it. And so um, we really had to sell and explain it, but people now actually come in with name recognition for Morpheus 8. Um, I love just this complete variability. And so being able to go into the fat, the collagen network, reticular dermis, um, and really being able to customize a zone in an area is what makes it so powerful. Um, and why so many um, patients are candidates. And then um, it's safety and efficacy. It's safe. And I love my world when I have very few AEs. Um, I don't want adverse events. And so with the Morpheus, um, we've had a huge success rate despite doing thousands and thousands of them. Um, and you need less treatments, I feel, than a lot of competitors for great results. And so those are a lot of the reasons that we um, brought this device on. So the consultation is everything. And so we very much in our practice track conversion. So when we do a consultation, um, we're really making sure that, um, that you're picking the right candidate. And having realistic expectations is probably the most important thing. So if someone comes in and they are you know, pulling their face like this or their neck like this, um, or they come in, you know, with surgical tape, like uh, that Greek movie, you know, where they're, they're taping up. Those, you're talking about, you know, sometimes a half inch to an inch of loose, lax skin. And so I have a bunch of um, surgeons I gladly refer to because I just don't want someone to waste money on something that is really a surgical treatment. Um, we are a huge injectable practice, I think one of the largest or the largest in the state of Pennsylvania. So we're high volume fillers and so for me it's such a massive component to Morpheus in really knowing what else have they done in our facilities to know where does Morpheus time and where does it fit? Do you do this before filler? After? How long after? And we'll be talking about that today and there's never a right answer and so really this is just um, uh, you know, my interpretation of what we've seen not work and work. Um, I also go into pain tolerance and if I know someone needs something and they're, you know, they, they can barely handle a toxin, I, I, I'm not going to refer them necessarily for their very first thing to do to be a, um, a laser or a, or a microneedling device that can be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, before and after pictures are huge um, because it, a lot of times people can't see slow changes and we get people, oh, I don't want my pictures done and then they'll come back six months, I don't see anything. And pictures save us all the time with Morpheus. And so really perfecting your pictures can really save headaches later on. Um, and I used to think, well, you can't see any level of detail with, with treatments like Morpheus or um, regular microneedling, but with good photography, you really can see some skin tightening. Um, I always, as a philosophy, undersell and over-deliver. So I will never be like, oh my gosh, you're going to love it. And oh, wow, it's going to do this and this. And I'll, you know, I just say, look, every year a new generation of devices come out. Every year these fleet of devices are updated and improved. And in the end, um, um, Morpheus 8 is the best that's out right now for skin laxity, along with all these other issues. And so I really try to focus on home run areas. And then always mentioning maintenance treatments at consultations. So I've had devices that, you know, they're a big hit for six months and then the, the success of that device goes away because you really in the beginning didn't set the expectations that you need maintenance. You can't just come in and, 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 and do a treatment and then never come back. It's like working out. You have to constantly be working on your skin and remodeling and the day after the treatment you're aging again so really talking about maintenance in that consultation um, helps segue where they're like well you told me this would be fixed and i think the other main word for me in consultation is well you're going to get rid of this so i get red flagged my, my my hairs go up on my arms when someone says you're going to fix this you're going to get rid of this so in the consultations i'm very neurotic about saying no 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 let's rephrase, I'm going to soften. We're going to gently remodel. You're gonna see just overall improvements, not only in your texture, but a little bit of, of, of um, laxity improvement. And potentially if someone has scars from acne or other um, ailments, we'll see improvements in those too. Technique, 
um, is probably the most important thing. And I get a lot of phone calls in offices that um, call me asking for help and why am I not successful? Why are you guys doing so much? And I have to say there's certain when, you know, we have over 30 lasers and I have some that you could do a training. Someone comes in, um, the company sends their, their amazing, um, you know, nurse trainer and they spend six hours with you. And then the next day the, the owners are kind of like, okay, um, go start doing patients. And this is not one of those devices. It's, it's almost like IPL. There is a major learning curve when it comes to having a successful treatment. Anyone could do it, but you don't realize why you're not seeing great results for four to six months. So our training program is pretty rigorous. Um, my team are, when they're hired, they are told you're going to be given exams. So we actually have typed out exams. So even though they have to go through the training, they have to watch three, they have to do three, they have to take our written exam. And once they've done all of those things, then they are approved to be launched for running a device like this. And then I went and clouded all my locations on my cell phone. So pictures are taken and a brand new um, Morpheus provider has to call me Sunday, 2 p.m. I look at the pictures on my phone at home. They tell me what their treatment settings are. I approve it. And at that point, we then, um, uh, I say, yep, I totally agree with your settings. After they've done a few, then they're, then they're, then they're kind of flying all by themselves. Um, the Morpheus handpiece has two, um, uh, and we'll, we'll be doing the body, which is the blue, um, and it's deeper. It can go up to seven millimeters. And I think that's one of the most amazing things about this platform is they keep coming out with new heads. And you have to have an innovation because when it came out with just the standard 24 needles, which is our workhorse for face and neck, um, we started to realize, gosh, we really can't get that on um, the lower eye or the upper lip as well because this is a tiny face. So they came out with the prime and the prime with only 12 needles allows us to really customize into certain areas. And then um, some of the textural changes we found um, we really needed that more superficial epidermal resurfacing and, and then kind of developing that 0.5 um, millimeters was a big game changer. And then when Body Morpheus came out, um, that one was crazy exciting because it actually is going to 7 millimeters and we'll show today um, the power of that. The prime tip we love because if we really pull up that surface tissue of the upper eyelid, we can catch some of that upper skin um, laxity. We also can do a heck of a lot with um, some of the periocular fat pad herniations, some of the malar mounds. And um, so this has been an exciting tip um, to be able to incorporate into a standard um, treatment. A lot of times now, because we are such a large non-surgical um, filling practice and um, a lot of, of I, I'm like, you need surgery. This is surgery. And nope, I'm not doing it. Not for two more years. My husband's ill. I can't take care of it, but whatever you can do, improve. So this was a really neat treatment that with just the, I, I now, before I will fill, I will first try to improve the ocular tissue, the fat pads, by targeting um, some of that deeper subdermal um, tissue and really knowing the anatomy of the eye is important. Where's the muscle? Where's that fat? And um, that prime tip allows us to kind of customize. And then when I go in afterwards with some dermal fillers, I'm very excited to see some improvements in that regard. And then with the resurfacing tip, um, again, being able to really see that textural change by going more superficially. Um, this is a great add-on that you can do kind of at the end of the treatment. And now we actually um, have been really incorporating this where we actually have just resurfacing of the eye because it has been just shockingly good with under eye, very fine crepiness. Um, and um, and then we also have the AccuType face type body type platform. Um, and this was just, um, you know, a simple AccuType, no lipo or anything. And, and you know, it, it, for people that don't want a facelift, and of course my, my surgical friends will say, oh, if I just could, you know, and they're right. But, um, but a lot of our, our clients are, are happy with their results 
and what we're able to provide. Um, other additional big features is really just that the downtime is pretty minimal versus our CO2s, which we kind of have to tell them you need to, you look like Freddy Cougar for two weeks, burn victim, but then you look great at a month. Um, and then really the stretch marks, surgical scars, self-harm scars, um, active acne um, results have been um, added perks that we've learned to use. Um, and so before we get now to some of our live demos, I'd just like to talk about our pre-care. Um, most important thing is really getting off that topical BLT, um, using a face, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about this more, but just really making sure they're sterilized because you have to remember that anything that you um, have on that surface of the skin and are um, driving into the sebaceous glands or driving in deep, you don't want to end up with any post um, breakouts or dermatitis or milia, and so um, sterilization is super important. Accutane, um, there is a lot of data to say that you can do devices while someone's in Accutane. A lot of times it just varies on what's their dosing of the Accutane, um, and, but we usually are about six months post. Um, someone who has a history of PIH, um, or a higher Fitzpatrick, I am very careful to pre-treat, um, to stay deeper, to time it with a time of year, which normally I don't really care what time of year. I usually do mine in August because it's my, my vacation. Um, and, um, and someone who is on any um, uh, aspirin or other blood thinners, um, you can sometimes see some bruising, so making sure that we're talking about that. Um, Breakouts of um, HSV, I can't stand um, having viral breakouts. I, I see a lot of micro scarring, and so we're really neurotic about giving an antiviral prophylactically and for a couple days afterwards. As far as post-care, um, I, this is where I think it's a little controversial, so I, I'm sorry, in mode people, I know you guys use Baxitracin, but I'm a huge regenerative medicine exosome PRP lover. And so, um, so for me, I feel like the channels are open. The last thing I want to do is stick, you know, Baxitracin or um, Aquaphor on directly. And so we actually use a ton of post-treatment um, exosomes or PRP. And um, we have a private labeled HA with copper peptides that is really anti-inflammatory. And with that hyaluronic, um, we see great. We've never had any complications. We've never had a single infection. Um, and I just think it's just about how much we really are neurotic with making sure their face is double cleansed, sterilized with hippocleanse, sterilized with um, hypochloric bromide, and, um, and then throughout the treatment constantly um, cleaning them. Also, I know Lassen's another big popular one. Um, avoiding sunscreens for 24 hours, no makeup for 24 to 48 hours, and, um, and then just really letting them know that the face and neck, um, the neck is always going to take longer to heal and can have more reactions than the face, and so as long as they have those expectations, they're pretty happy. So now I think we're going to go to um, our live demonstrations and excited to show you. All right. So. Great introduction so far, yeah. Dr. Espinoza. We'd like to remind the live audience, those who are watching currently live, to feel free and send in our questions that we may have for her, and we'll relay them during the program. Wonderful. So um, I have today here with me Ashley, who has done um, so many treatments, um, and she is amazing, and she uh, is really an expert, so we'll you can always pawn some questions onto her too. And um, our model is Brianna. And Brianna, um, if you can just tell them a little bit about some of your ethnicity, I think is super important question because um, a lot of times when people look at me, um, they think I'm Asian, but I'm actually 50% um, Latina and, and, um, and I've been really overly aggressively treated because my skin's fair, but as we all know, um, um, skin of color can have um, more propensity to having PIH. So I've had a lot of complications in the device from over being so I'm, because of personal reasons, I'm always really careful to ask everyone, where, you know, where's the family from? So why don't you share with us really quick? Um, so I am Puerto Rican. My mom is 100% Puerto Rican and my dad is Mexican and black. So half and half on that side too. 
So that's why she's so gorgeous. She happened to get the genetic uh, lottery ticket of all these beautiful cultures. And so, um, but I am going to definitely say that um, we're gonna go down a little bit in energies because this is her very first um, microneedling or any energy device, correct? Yeah. Yep, so, um, and then with every treatment, we will increase those settings and, um, and, uh, and go up in power and so forth. So the biggest question actually, I think the most important thing is assessment. I think when we started, we were not so smart and we would just aggressively, because it was so exciting to have something that could go four millimeters and have all this power, just look at the face and, and I think it's a common mistake um, where you just go and treat the whole face as it's one depth and obviously we know it's not. Um, and so having a strategy and a game plan, I don't go into my day without a game plan. And so our practice uses, um, do you have a, a marker? Yeah, thank you. We use these uh, disposable, like laminated forms. And so I like it because I can really have her sit up and I will, at the beginning of the day, be able to look through and say, okay, um, this person two months ago just had fillers and they had fillers in their melomental folds a little bit in the nasolabial folds, some in the cheek. And the last thing I wanna do is go over superficial and deep fat pads in those melomental folds, which everyone can't stand. And, um, and can you put your head up really quick? Thank you so much. And what would happen if I aggressively ran a four or three millimeter right over this area is she's coming in because she wants this tighter or a lot of, not necessarily you, but patients in general. And in the end, you go and degrade that filler, the fat pads, and now you gave the illusion of it being worse. So um, to me, this zone right here is kind of like a no-fly zone. I do not like to do anything less than probably a millimeter in that zone because um, it's just a, it's just to me such a problem. I've seen so many people overtreated there. Um, other than that, we all know about um, the face and, and causing facial shaping and a lot of um, people I'm seeing are coming back with buccal fat pads that, that took out too much, but you can contour around her faces. And so I'm really looking at her side profile saying, okay, is there a little bit of some mental fat? Is there a little bit of contouring I can do to give her jawline a more chiseled jawline? Um, because no one's ever unhappy when you do that. And um, is there a way to contour the face in other ways? And so one approach to doing the face is to always start deep first. So we do this in general with a lot of our lasers is, okay, if I'm gonna do four millimeters, where am I gonna do the four millimeters? And I'm gonna come probably up under the cementum. And so the game plan for me here that I'm writing before I even start is saying you can relax, sorry you know, is in the cementum, I've decided to do four millimeters, triple stacked in probably four little stamping positions, just to see if I can really tack this up and potentially try and target some of that um, um, fat cells. When I come to um, the jawline over here, I'm gonna stick with a three millimeter, kind of same thing, double stacking, along um, this area, probably wouldn't triple stack. And then same thing, I know right in this area, trying to give a little bit of a reduction above that modiolus in trying to contour. Um, so I might also run a three millimeter there. Any area that I put some super periosteal dermal fillers in here, obviously no device can really hit that deep. Um, or I guess you couldn't a cachectic patient so I'm very cautious in someone that just spent $2,000 on some, some um, um, cheek filler and that I'm now pulsing over it at four millimeters. And I've actually seen people refer that had that done. And they come in and they're like, I don't understand why their after pictures look worse. And they look worse because you dissolved all their filler, um, possibly some native fat. And, and in the end, if they would have used this device in the proper way, it would have augmented their fillers and made the filler results and their faces look even better. So um, 
So in this area, kind of running a three millimeter, two millimeter, one millimeter. Energy levels, um, of course, she's a, a Fitzpatrick, probably five, and so I want to be cautious. So I'm going to be running like a 25 under um, with those three millimeters and about a 15, 10 for her um, first treatment. And then as we move on, get a little bit more bold. Um, and sit up for me. And then with the forehead, we can see some of this um, acne um, that she struggles with. And I know there's a lot of case studies and some reports on improvements in active acne. And so that'll be very exciting if we can reduce some of that glandular activity up there and improve some of that texture. So we're gonna run a two millimeter and a one millimeter at eight and see if we can improve um, some of the active acne. Usually that is done about four treatments a month apart. Um, and when, on, when it's on the face, you can run it at a two or a three. Um, foreheads, because of toxin and frontalis um, fat loss, I've seen so many people overly aggressively treated and we're accelerating the aging by going too deep with treatments and too aggressive. So I'm very respectful to the frontalis um, uh, anatomy and to not being too, too um, aggressive with energies, but it is wonderful when you can improve some of the rioteds, um in the forehead. So now that I have my written out game plan, I can always refer to it if I kind of forget. Um, and, and then comes the big debate. When we have our full staff meetings, we get in big fights, um, friendly, um, where some people are like, no, you have to start at the forehead and only the forehead and always do the same thing and then go one cheek to the other cheek and the methodicalness of it. And then we have other people that go where they do all the depth. So if anything's four millimeters, they're gonna hit those first. Then anything that's three millimeters, they're gonna hit those first. And then they'll go two and one and they're all over the place. Um, and then I've seen lastly, someone who considers what to be the most painful. So it's very interesting how some people can feel um, you know what, I'm just gonna have you start because I'm worried about time. And, um, and I, my brain functions better mm -hmm. talking or performing because I'm very hyper-provoked, so. And we have a few questions for you oh, already, good. so we can start with that. Yeah. Um, so some, a few patients um, had breakouts after Morpheus 8, just a my, minority. Do you think PRP could prevent this? Or why do you think that's occurring? I think, um, in our experience from um, a decade ago, we saw that a ton with a lot of just fractionated erbium devices. And so I feel that um, we just were not doing a good enough job of cleansing and degreasing the skin. And so I think if someone is very prone to acne and they have a lot of acne lesions and this tip and these needles are constantly going in and then could be carrying it to another area. I actually um, have backtracked where I always used to just blame, oh, it's normal, it's a purge, it's a purge. And now I actually think that we induced it a lot of times by driving superficial bacteria or you're going with the needles through the sebaceous gland driving it in, and maybe then it is a purge, but ever since we have switched our protocols to um, double cleansing, um, alcohol, hibiclins, and now laser sin, we have not seen that. So that goes to tell me anecdotally, but, um, but I'd be curious to know if you, have, if you have a thought on that, because I could be wrong. No, I think it depends on the medium of your topical, right? What, what do you typically use for your topical? Uh, we're using a, a 2010-4 BLT. Okay, and what kind of medium? Is it a plasticized gel? Is it a cream? Um, we have four different ones, so it varies if we're doing the face or the body, mm -hmm. but go on. Okay, so I think that varies. I think if, I hardly see occasional breakouts post-Morpheus, but if I do, they're very short-lived, you know, yeah. like maybe something will pop up for a day or two and then it's gone. Yeah. Um, another question we received is um, for- and, and just on that, I, we have some patients that they just, after the first one, they're like, I'm not doing it unless I give them antibiotics and I will. Right. I have zero problem treating with antibiotics for short -term. That, that short-term um, period. I think that that's wonderful. Okay. Yep. 
Um, so relating to that, they found that um, cleansing after numbing with acetone reduces the acne. What are your opinions on that? Um, the, the, the people that are, seem to be prone, I do think it helps. It's just so dehydrating, but um, I think it can help. Yes. And then could you touch on Morpheus resurfacing treating active acne? Um, and to piggyback on the last two questions, um, for practices that are not aware of hypochlorite bromide, I think that's really kind of helped um, that ingredient. There's even some, some new studies that you can actually spray this post acne. So like two days after, you can use this at home as almost like an acne type bleach. So can we see the um, label on that touch? Yeah, yeah, this one, there's, a, there's several companies. One's Purisin, one's Lasersin. You can even buy from some of the big make, big box stores, you know, jugs of hypochlorite bromide. And, um, but, but, but I found it interesting. A couple of my, um, germ friends have been, you know, on active acne patients, putting, putting it as home care. Um, post laser to also prevent. So that was interesting. Um, as far as the active acne goes, um, you know, I, I want more data, more studies. We actually have a lot of, we do use 1064 long pulse um, device. And, but this has been fascinating to see that when someone's coming in for laxity, um, that they are finding active lesions improved. And I think the best part of it too is anyone who has active lesions has freshly new micro scarring from a prior lesion. And so the fact that you can be not only working on prior scarring, but now working to prevent future scarring by reducing the activity, I think makes this a home run treatment where before we were not using an active um, uh, patients in fear of spreading the bacteria, kind of like a microderm abrasion. You wouldn't want to do someone with pus all over their face, a microderm. But um, obviously the heat is what keeps us safe. And the only thing I would recommend is just make sure every 200 pulses you really are sterilizing the needle tips on those cases and you put that wet alcoholic gauze so it pulses through and sterilizes them. I think that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. What antibiotic would you recommend for acne prone patients? Um, usually we're using Doxy or Minnow. Yeah. Okay, great. And then next question is, uh, when you do four millimeter stacking on the submental region, do you also do three, two, and one after as well? Um, yes, you can. Yep. And especially too, if they're um, someone that, that you know, you're trying to, to really kind of connect the full neck, I think part of our success with Morpheus has been that I would say 90% of our client population does their neck. My biggest regret when I went into this field two decades ago was that I was young and I only thought of the face. So everything I sold was packages only of the face. It was like the neck was like we were no neck people. And, and then all of a sudden 20 years later, I'm like, why do they look old? I kept their faces the same. But why they look old? They went bald and their necks. And so now when we started to incorporate that everyone had it their neck, not only is everyone happy because say someone did it for their eyes, but then their neck gets better, they're thrilled. Say someone did it for their neck and then all of a sudden now their crow's feet are reduced and their, the rest of their t texture looks better, they're happy. So I really incorporate the neck and with the neck obviously you're not going to be at four millimeters. You don't want to reduce too much fat around those platysmal bands. You don't want to re reduce too much fat in the neck because you can actually age the neck. So that's where the, the two millimeters plays a big role in kind of double stacking the four, three, two. All right. Um, next question. Do you give any oral sedation prior to treatment? We have, I think, two out of like 1,500 patients that we will give some Xanax to. Um, they have panic attacks, disorders, they can't use nitrous. Um, but we've got a toolbox. We love vibrators, we love balls, we love um, the nitrous and the zimmer um, and the BLT. So I think um, um, those play a big role. And then, 
a learning curve because it's just like injecting. If you go in like a dart, it hurts. If you learn to use pressure points where when you're doing a painful area and you put pressure somewhere else, the brain always goes to sensation before it goes to pain fibers. So you're distracting the brain. And so that's why they, people can tell a difference between who's a brand new Morpheus tech and who is an advanced tech because that advanced person has learned how to distract them with their other hand with a pressure. So she's not just, you can see that Ashley's really doing a great job of not just really um, squeezing the skin to making sure that she's not getting arcing and that she's getting full coverage, but she's also doing it because she's pushing pressure down so that that person's brain's not only just going to the needles pulsing. Can you clarify what settings you're currently using? So currently we're at the cycle single um, at a one millimeter and an energy of eight. And right now the reason why that energy is so low is because she's at a one millimeter and we have a Fitzpatrick five. Um, so normally our go-to for the face is about a 20 in energy, um, but, um, um, but we also have some people that were really, they're bigger, heavier faces. We're trying to do a ton of contouring and we've gone so aggressive where I've to mess the face, done dental blocks, fully block their face and we've run it as high as 55. So, um, I think the biggest change from years ago was that we used to think, okay, blast them hard. And now there's some new, new studies and data to show that density is what matters. So we went from doing more fixed mode to more cycle mode because every time you're pulsing and you're getting more columns of thermocoagulation um, and more columns of remodeling, the outcomes are better. So you're better off sticking with a lower energy and a lot more density where you're getting 1,000 to 1,500 pulses. I'm in your way. Okay. <laughs> that brings awesome. up the next debate of fixed versus cycle. Yeah. So, I mean, fixed has a total role. Like triple stacking under a neck, high jewels, if I want to really target the fat cells. Um, but cycle for a lot of the rest of the phase where there's a lot of crepiness, fine lines, I don't want super high energies. I really just want more density. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of cycle versus fixed on the face and neck. Yeah. But in certain areas like the submental area, I will do fixed. Yep. Um, but mostly I do cycle. But it, you know, you ask 10 different providers, you're going to get at least five different answers and there's <laughs> no wrong answer it's there's, you know there's so many brilliant people that use this platform and I'm always you know loving how everyone's brain thinks it's what's best for your practice how about overlap do you change how much you overlap depending on the anatomical area and the angles and all that or you t tailor it you know I I think that um, I was talking to the brilliant Wanda, you know, so on body now, instead of just going all in one direction, switching the handpiece direction, there could be some improvements in that with the way the plate is and the energy is delivered. Perhaps. Randomizing that. Um, I know that the learning book is really about 50% overlap, but, um, but if we're really trying to, to to be honest, we're probably closer to about 30 to 40% overlap just to give in a little bit more density. Um, the goal is that the skin doesn't have checkerboards with like white spaces. It should be this fully erythematous, kind of swollen, almost like a, a light, you know, superficial sunburn look at the end versus patches. And so, um, you just you'll achieve that confluent like even distribution by by making sure you have good overlap can you talk about how many pulses you would do on this patient specifically um so in her case because our energies are low i want to do more density so um i would say it's her very first treatment so if we're considering the face probably um, a thousand and then if we're doing her neck 1500 um, if she tolerates this well her second treatment then we would probably try and do closer from a thousand to 1500 for her um, 
face mm -hmm. and then her neck another five, you know, mm -hmm. potentially three to 400. Mm -hmm. So we could be looking at close to 2000 mm -hmm. pulses, face and neck mm -hmm. um, at a lower energy. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of times it's just the fatigue of the, um, it's the fatigue of the, how much they can tolerate. And so I think sometimes if you make this a, a post-traumatic stress disorder, lifetime trauma, they're never coming back. So listen to, listen to them, do everything you can for pain control. Um, what's, you know, um, it's just crazy how some people, you can barely touch them and they're jumping off and then others know, n know nothing and they, they're sleeping, so. Spoken from true experience, huge volumes and always paying attention to the patient. Well, your excellence extender is continuing. Would you mind uh, continuing with your didactic with the next segment? Would that be a good time to transition? We'll, we'll apply more questions throughout the program. Um, fantastic, yeah. So let me grab my... Um, Let me grab my, uh, we can go to the, we can go to a short one minute video real quick. Hi, I'm Barbara Lippert and I'm from New Jersey. I have three children at home and I'm 56 years old. I'm here for my second body Morpheus treatment with Dr. Espinoza today. I chose to do body Morpheus after a consultation with Dr. Espinoza when I asked her to address some skin laxity issues in my midriff area. After three children, you can imagine that there's a little bit of extra cushion there and I asked her if there was a way that we could safely address you know the texture of my skin and help it to tighten a little bit so that I could get beach ready for the summer. This is actually my second body Morpheus treatment. After my first treatment I was very thrilled with the results that I had. Minimal downtime I was able to do next day all of my activities. I was probably about three months into the treatment when I felt that I did see some remarkable differences in the skin texture. So I'm hopeful that after my second treatment and my third, I'll be ready for the summer. I was a little apprehensive, I have to say, on that first treatment. I don't tolerate pain too well, and I was a little concerned that I would be a little uncomfortable. But I did accept some Pronox pain management treatment, and that helped me get through the, the procedure very easily. After my third body Morpheus treatment, I'm looking forward to heading straight to the mall to buy that new great bikini for the summer. I'm looking forward to my second body Morpheus treatment today. I had great results the first time and I anticipate this time it's going to be even better. Okay. So right now I'm going to just quickly talk about the body um, hand piece and when that one came out, I think I've been um, just so disappointed with so many other body technologies that I, I, my expectations were low. Um, and it was that horse that, that, was, that we had, was kind of the unknown, and a year later really like, came out to be the big winner of 2021. Um, and I think part of the reason was body takes so long to heal because of the lack of the sebaceous glands and how long it takes to recover, um, we really are, are, are seeing these incredible results a year later. And so um, for us, the body Morpheus, when they came out with the burst mode of where it can hit three, three different sections, it just caused this like grossly more four-dimensional tightening and being able to not only hit a lot of the um, subcutaneous tissue, but a lot of the, the epidermal dermal, um, a lot more of the DEJ, the reticular dermis. So just seeing all this remodeling, and we'll show you some before and after pictures in the live of an abdomen, um, but it is now hands down my favorite um, device, and I'm booked out September 14th to do my entire legs. Might not stop, but, um, uh, but I'm really excited about this technology. So I'll go to the first slide. The real home run was a year later, someone came in for toxin and then said, I'm so sorry, but you just, I gotta take my pants off. You gotta look at my leg, my knee. Like, this is crazy. I thought it didn't work. The first six months I saw no results. And now um, a year later, I just woke up last week and my knees are tighter. And so, that's the kind of stories we hear. So I really let people know when you come to the face, you're going to see tightening way past six months. 
and on the body, definitely, definitely up to a year. Um, and so I think that um, um, we're going to now um, quickly bring in our um, body um, model. And also, I think we just finished up. If you want to just zone back really quick to her face, you could see that she did really, really well. We're going to finish her off. Did you put on the resurfacing tip or no? Not just that. Um, but I think we'll, we'll have to catch her at the end of the live stream. Um, one, last, one last question. Yep. Um, sunscreen, do you but use it immediately after treatment? Or I how do long not. do you wait? No. I am all about, um, I, right now, this is like, you know, the gateway to a wonderful place in being right, right where I need to be with um, her DE junction. And, and, and so for me, um, for purposes of time today, I would immediately be putting exosomes or uh, PRP and uh, trying to within minutes. So there are people we'll try to add that on. And the second you finish the forehead, we're drizzling some, some PRP. And when we finish the cheek, we're drizzling PRP. And then we'll go to another area, because I don't even want to wait for the whole treatment to be over before I'm putting exosomes or PRP on. I want to do it immediately. And the last thing I want to do is put an occlusive mineral like zinc or titanium oxide, which I'm a psychoneurotic fan of. But, um, but on the day of, I don't like that. I would prefer to. Um, put in our, um, our line free serum, which again has peptides, hyaluronic and copper. And so we have zero reactions. And again, it's a good thing in hydrating the skin and, and you don't want the skin to get too dehydrated or you can get kind of an eczematous type reaction. So just to show you really quick, we just have the resurfacing tip on. When we add this tip onto the treatment, you just have to let them know they're going to have a little bit more downtime of some, um, just redness and swelling. Are you seeing anything else post resurfacing? No, maybe a little bit more erythema like we talked about, but nothing too much. Okay. To that. And does it hurt more? No, not no. at all. All right. Yeah. What so, power do you have it on currently? Right now we have it on MG8. Eight still. And we're just going to do the forehead. Okay. Um, mainly because right there, she tends to get the majority of her acne <clears throat> breakouts and, and we're trying to see some textural <clears throat> improvements. So. <clears throat> And I'm going to have Bar, uh, our next model, come on in, and that will we'll do a quick body body swap. Yeah, fantastic so far. We appreciate everything. Um, yeah, we're let's have you sit up. Next quick. video, and then we'll have a patient switch. Thank you for your okay. accommodation. Okay. Awesome. All right. So she'll. We're going to finish you up. Hi, my name is Grace. I'm one of the medical estheticians here at La Chalet. One of the most common concerns amongst my patients is skin laxity and fine lines, specifically in the neck and under eye areas. Gen Z's like myself are really driving the market right now and are very concerned with preventative aging. For myself, I chose to treat with the Morpheus to address skin texture. The microneedling with the radio frequency work as catalysts to stimulate collagen production and remodeling. Um, overall, the appearance of the skin is improved smoothing out the appearance, treating fine lines, texture, and skin laxity. This in turn, for the Morpheus, the results can be seen in improvement of skin laxity, so the tightening of the skin, addressing you know, areas where there are more fat, so getting a little bit more of a curved appearance in the face, under the cheekbones, under the chin, and helping with under eye creepiness, as well as skin texture as a whole, and as a result, the overall appearance of the skin is improved. For patients, this is a really exciting treatment because it's kind of like an all-in-one. We want to address anti-aging, so tightening, skin texture, um, under eye creepiness, that all as a whole is going to improve and make the skin look more youthful. Slow down the aging process with that collagen production. So as a provider, it's exciting to be able to provide that sort of a treatment and care for the patients. Um, you know, we want to do a double whammy. We want to be able to really target everything as a whole instead of just doing a million and one different treatments. We have something that we can really utilize and get a lot accomplished. I love Morpheus because it is a home run. 
It's targeting a variety of different skin concerns. And overall, it's slowing down the aging process, which is all we're really trying to do, right? We wanna, we wanna stimulate that collagen production. We want to look more youthful. And this really addresses each little thing to be able to get you there. Um, in her case, I want to do, I want to hit a little bit of that sub Q and try and get some reduction along with skin tightening. Sometimes we'll have bodybuilders come in, there's not a morsel of fat on them and they're just looking for tightening and we almost then are kind of treating them like their face. And then in other cases, you have someone who's very um, thin, works out, looks great, just a couple of that um, middle age um, areas that you want to try and get some deeper tightening along with superficial tightening. And so um, there are many people that we just use topical and it works fine, little nitrous topical, easy. When we run someone with super high energies at a seven burst, then we tend to want to do some tumescent to make them more comfortable um, and happy to come back. You can do that with kind of a cannula spinal needle. That's usually um, the way I do it, but I don't have that equipment at this location, so I'm using the Meso Ram, which is just a three needle. And so far, um, I started put about 70 mLs in. I just didn't finish this section because the, the, the event started. So I'm just gonna finish this, and then we'll start down here where she's a little number. But I just wanted to um, show just a kind of a little bit of, of when we are doing this kind of, um, uh, injections for numbing, how it's done, because sometimes on these live events, they go straight to the, the treatment and, and the before and making someone comfortable along with the after is just as important as the treatment. So, um, and so our, uh, what do you use for usually as your tumescent solution? I use a modified Klein, which is 500 mil milligrams for 500 cc's, which is 0.1 percent. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, just watching out, making sure you're not getting any kind of lidocaine toxicity is critically important. I tend to be on the really conservative side um, with those dosings, and um, and. Um, I'd say just, you know, be very cautious. We've seen um, and heard all of us of stories where someone saran wrapped their entire body for an hour with a very strong topical BLT and then went back and, um, and uh, then to mess them and, and realized that that topical is just as potent as... Um, so tell me, are you pretty numb from what I did earlier? Yeah. All right, I think we're good. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, and then as far as um, this, uh, interesting, I think um, the slides on the body, I think somehow were missed over, but um, what's pretty, amazing about the body is that the new burst mode, unlike the face where it can just do one fixed depth, this one's doing three at one time. So we're doing a 753 where we're, we're, we're saving so much time because I don't have to go over with a seven, then a five, then a three. And, um, and with that seven, when you're actually treating it, if you double um, fix pulse it, it, you can see heat going beyond the needle. So you're almost at eight millimeters and laterally. And for me, that's, in her case, um, she's had one treatment so far and the improvements after one's already been so remarkable. So I'm kind of, don't, don't break what's not, don't fix what's not broken. So I'm gonna stay with that 753 setting in um, double stacking. You want to be careful with energies because now you can have bulk heating. You, you have three sets all being done at once. When you're pulsing this, you want to try not to pull out too fast because you're going to hear it uh, pulse where it's going to each depth and then you can kind of pull out. And so, um, and then just making sure, same thing, that you really have that, that full contact and it's not that difficult on the abdomen to do. We just want to, I'll have you go ahead and um, start, um, but let's start down here, so that way. 
Um, and so the mode setting on, this, on the device is burst, repetition, we'll keep it a, um, single, and then I think what I want you to do is just double pulse her in, um, in the lower area. Um, trying to think what other questions. You can also go off burst mode, and you can set it where you just run a seven millimeter, and if you're truly targeting subcutaneous tissue, and, and just set the seven at a higher energy, just pulsing at that energy, and that's when I will veer um, from, do you wanna go up on this here? So energy level, we're gonna be at a 20 here. There we go. Okay. Um, and so sometimes if you're with the body hand piece, don't realize that you don't always have to be in burst mode. You can actually go with fixed mode. But it's certainly awesomely efficient though. Yeah. So much faster. <laughs> yes. We were like, yay! Yeah. Great to have. Because um, I can't imagine trying to add on all those additional Pulses. Um, pulses, that would have been a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, could you reiter reiterate your lidocaine approach? There was a question about your conservative toxicity. You certainly use very small volumes, but how much did you use here, for instance? Um, Ballpark? In, yeah, in this one, we used a, um, a, a um, 50 ml, 2% Lido with Epi, 15, oh, 50 of um, Lido with Epi, 15 of sodium bicarb. Mm -hmm. So it's about a 0.1% Lido concentration. Yep. So Maybe about 100 cc's? Yep. Um, for our society, it's 35 mg per key, so we're way below her maximum. Yeah, yeah. and I would say I'm even less than 35. Yep. Like I, yep. so, a lot of times we're trying to be closer to 25 or 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're probably way below that. Yeah. Very, very safe, in other words. Yeah, very, very safe. Yep. And she looks very comfortable. So. And, and, you know, what's happening now is people are so blown away by this device because we're finding improvements in the front of the legs with cellulite, with skin texture, um, that almost everyone who did an area now wants to do their whole lower body. And so now you start adding in more and more lidocaine, so you really gotta be cautious and thinking about how to not you know, have problems happen if you're doing someone's arms, their up the front of the legs, back of the legs, banana roll, abdomen, and I will tell you, we have people do that many. And there's some that we have to divide their body into different, one week one, next week another one. So from a practice management viewpoint, you package these as external treatments within a certain time frame with a maintenance? How do you, how do you present that to the client? So the other thing is we've seen people come to us from other practices that had Morpheus and they had like weird issues and I think, um, and I'm also disturbed to hear that people are not throwing out the tips. Like these are single use tips and they are a needle and needles dull. So you're not gonna go and do with a, a beady needle, you know, 400 units of toxin and keep poking the face because believe it or not, you'll increase bruising. You'll increase skin trauma because the needle gets dull. So these needles get dull, I would say probably around 2,000 pulses. Um, but not only is that completely bad medicine and bad practice to reuse this, um, um, but you can increase your complications because now you're taking dull needles and doing too much. So I'm uh, sorry, I had to digress to just no, get I, my uh, 100 agree. my passion out yeah. about um, the grotesqueness of using the same tip on a different patient. You know, um, but but when it comes to dulling of the needles, same thing. I would want to be careful that if I did too much of the face and body. You know, like we, in the very beginning, before um, the body came out, we were trying to do the body with the face. And you noticed yeah. after a while on the body that it just, it was a little bit more uncomfortable. And, and sometimes the needles, it just didn't look quite the same. Right. Great point. Yeah. So. Um, so just getting back to the other thing, do you package, do you say, well, their optimal treatment will entail this many treatments? 
uh, this, far, this far apart space by X number of days. Um, in our practice, we usually do three with a fourth maintenance at six to 12 months. With the three treatments, about a space about three to four weeks apart. Do you, what do you do here? Yeah, so for the face, we're four to six weeks apart, um, three treatments, always three. Body, same thing. I'm just a fan of three because I think that um, it's like laser hair when we bombed it back in the day and sold them by single treatments. It just, you know, you, you, the, the skin needs enough remodeling to see an improvement. We will discount each package. So if you bought a, a package of, for your abdomen of, of three and you go to then do your legs, that second area might be 10% off because you're, you're, Come, you're yeah, trying to motivate them. Hey, you know, you're going to not just love the abdomen, but the legs. And the more you do, the better. It's just like laser hair. You never want to just sell. Um, if someone comes in and wants like their face done, which is the less successful due to hormonal um, uh, components of laser hair, I'm always trying to have them do a home run area like their armpit or their leg because then they're really a believer and they can really see. Um, the good news with Body Morpheus is sometimes, you know, body is a little bit pricier. Um, and so some, um, uh, you know, people just have to try one, but I will say that we've never had anyone disappointed with one. So um, it is one treatment that after one, but the big key is not letting them come back or take any photos or make any judgment on it if they're only doing one for a good three to six months. Because like I said, this is like wine. It gets better the longer it, it remodels. Agreed. You need to give it a chance to react to the energies. Yep. So if you're just targeting the subcutaneous tissue um, and you're not using burst mode, what kinds of energies are you using and is it related to their skin type? Um, it is related to their skin type and so, um, and it's also related to their tumescence. So, um, so I think a lot of factors, obviously she's a Fitzpatrick too, so, um, so we're less stressed out about it. But I honestly don't worry about energies at all on the higher end when I'm at seven millimeters. I'm protected. Um, where I get very stressed is when I'm at two and one millimeter in a darker Fitzpatrick or someone that's tan, um, you know, they can have more issues. So. You're intradermal at that point. Correct, mm -hmm. intradermal, exactly. And can you answer again what you're using topically? Um, for example, on her, what did you use topically for anesthesia? Um, I feel like on her, Ashley, do you know, did we use the 2010 for? Yeah, we did. 2010. Yeah, she's very comfortable. So maybe while Ashley is continuing her treatment, um, we could start doing a little bit of didactic for the next procedure. Sounds Whatever. great. Wonderful. Ashley, you're doing such a good that job. Thank you. And Barb, you're the greatest model. I'm Great so patient. impressed. But a testament to your clinical training program, I think, is the, the, the quality and the consistency is a t the tough part to get consistently. Knowledge is, put it flat, yeah. Oh, razor. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, again, knowledge is power. So it, it's worth um, all the weight in gold, the more training and um, uh, not rushing someone to start doing these on patients. Um, if they just saw a, uh, if they just got trained, really, really practicing. All right. So as far as the um, Triton, which we're just going to show a little bit, um, you know, laser hair has been out forever. And I know everyone probably on this web, um, live stream knows a lot about it. But the reason why I ended up um, moving our fleet of laser hair devices to this one was um, the portability of um, the device. It's, it's super small, easy, but really because they were so smart in um, 
in having what we call the light and the dark, and I'll talk about how it has three lasers in one. Um, but still, after all these years, laser hair removal is still extremely popular and in demand. Um, and the shaving industry is over $14 billion. And if you look at studies that were actually done on someone who did laser hair removal, they can save up to like $20,000 in a lifetime of buying razors because those, some of them aren't really, really expensive. Um, and it's the only long-term solution to unwanted hair growth. Of course, you never use the word laser hair removal. Um, removal is a bad, bad word in our practice. Um, reduction is important. And why, um, why I went with the Triton was just because it has um, three lasers in one. Um, and it's able to fire all these multiple wavelengths in each pool, um, pulse while maintaining a super high power. Um, it's safe in all skin types and it has a very low risk of PIH, um, can target the hair at different stages of the growth cycle, and we can get a really um, great improvement with less treatments than older traditional um, devices that we used to have. And then it has this parallel cooling, pre-cooling plate um, to make it pretty comfortable. And so as far as wavelengths go, um, it was so brilliant to take these three different Alexandrite, the 755 and the 810, and then also the 1064, which was always classic and safe in a skin type um, six. And so what they did is they took these three wavelengths and put it into two different hand pieces. So when we refer in our notes the Triton Duo Light, it's referring to the 755 8, um, 810 blend. Um, and that one's really effective in skin types one to three. And then the Duo Dark um, has that 1064 and very safe and darker skinned um, um, skin types. Um, pearls to the Triton, um, if you are a user and you're on here just to try it out, is I would say in men, we do a lot of um, men who are on the Hairiest Man Award for Royal Caribbean winners. And so um, the back does really well, even if they're Fitzpatrick one to three, sticking with the dark uh, Triton Duo Dark will give us, I think, more optimal results. And that's just one little kind of pearl to the Triton. So we'll come really quick back to our model Barb. And Barb, you just decided to get beat up today, right? <laughs> um, wait one sec. I'm gonna just, go. there we go. Okay, awesome. And so, um, This way, goggles in tow, safety, and we're trying to pack a lot into your lunch hour. Um, and let me, yep, uh, <coughs> do this one too. Hey, arm, Barb, can you give me? So, of course, we want someone cleanly shaved the night before that morning. And um, we're telling, um, really alcoholing the area. Um, armpits to me was probably the greatest area. My whole body's laser hair removed and um, up, redu reduced. Um, but overall, uh, super happy. Um, it has a large plate um, that you can see. Um, here that that really makes it pretty fast and it's really neat too it has a glide mode and you can put the glide mode on so that it pulses really 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 quickly and um, what do we have it on right now just a regular yeah just pulse? Start it up. Um, put it at 12 joules all right so we're gonna put it at 12 joules um, it's the cooling is strong and Pulse was short because she's light skinned. We want a longer pulse um, when we're using the light hand piece. And pulse mode, I think we're good to go. I just need this. Yep. It also runs at 110 volts. Nice. You don't need a 220 or 230 volt. Um, and Chris was um, commenting that. Um, 
that you don't need a 210 volt, just a 110, which I agree is like huge because having to keep uh, spending a thousand dollars a month on a new plug for a new laser is painful. And plus, when you have four locations just crushing it. Uh -huh. <laughs> And how many machines do you get? You have one per site? Is that how, how do you manage um, that? It this, varies because you know, each site go, yeah. starts at 3,000 yeah. and then ends up at 7,000 mm -hmm. square feet. Yeah. So the one that got doubled in size, that one has two devices now. That's fantastic. Um, it's a high class so, problem with the machinery, though. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah. Uh, but it's, a it's a good one to have. It's a good one to have. Yes, we, we like it. So you can see that took about two minutes um, mm -hmm. or less. And let's do the other um, armpit real quick. Mm -hmm. Or maybe just for fun, when I'm at the pool with you, we can um, just do one armpit and see, see how it works. We'll make you a study patient. That'd be fun, Barb. Mm -hmm. yeah. The patient experience is very relaxed at overall. I, mean, I know I see you guys really take a lot of time to make the patients comfortable for initiating treatments. Yeah, you know, pain, um, I'm a big baby, so I'm glad I'm not tough because I'm a sympathizer um, versus a mocker of, oh, she's a wimp or he's a wimp um, because I'm the biggest wimp here. So um, I do everything um, and I test it out and I see, you know, how rough it is. And we have some devices that no one can do without taking, um, without designated drivers and, and um, benzos or so, and then we have others that, that we don't need to do anything but a few minutes of topical and this is one of those. So as you can see, this is the, um, uh, just the 755-810 and just getting the best of all wavelengths and really hitting kind of those melanocytes in the um, bulb and the stem cells. And that's why I think that um, with those dual wavelengths, we're seeing reduction in armpits, which is maybe needing sometimes three treatments. So really exciting. So Barb, that was amazing. Um, gosh, you're a rock star. Great, pa great patient, great. So yeah. Thank you so much for that incredible clinical synopsis, both for the didactic and the, and the application. And, but I think, I know the audience is just really looking forward to this segment at the end that you're going to present as, as much as I am, I which is on how to run a successful practice says, in your case, and then, uh, <laughs> those who are starting out, those who are seasoned or trying to transition in more Thank traditional you. practice to an aesthetic one. And we're very lucky to have you speak on that. Uh, return on investment is kind of a dirty word, but it, but I think it's uh, probably you can present yeah. it in the way you want. Thank you. Yep. All right. So, um, I hate the word ROI. Um, and so, even though I run all these practices and I have to know about money, I hate money and I I hate all of this side of it. However, I got to keep the lights on, and every year. Um, um, you know, our prices go up. Um, but my rules to live by and, and the word I really want to change and emphasize is um, really changing ROI to, to ROR, which is return on results. Um, and really just doing the right thing and choosing the right devices because if they work, then you are successful. And successful not only in your reputation and your brand, but successful in your own personal happiness and of course being able to pay off the device and um, and have the money to to upkeep with your laser fleets that you're able to constantly be getting new technology so um, to me this is just um, very good results lead to happy patients and um, and i have one you know thing with the device and and I know you know too because we've been doing this a long time um, you know in my lifetime I bought over probably 75 laser devices as a laser junkie and I have bought a quarter million dollar lasers and sold them on eBay for two thousand dollars two months later because they did not work and so and and I chose to make that decision because I knew I wouldn't be here 20 years later had I done something that I was not passionate about. So when I'm passionate about something, I believe in something, I always have success. 
Um, and so really good results, happy patient. Happy patient, less phone calls, there's nothing I love more or hate more than doing a great job um, injecting entire, someone's entire face, doing really complicated injections, and then getting a phone call because someone was not happy with their laser hair or their skin tightening. Um, and um, happy patient means paying off the loan. Happy patient means um, my company brand of Lost Chalet is more powerful because they refer more people. And then that leads to an ROI. So underlying theme here, only thing that matters is do what's best for the patient, never your pocketbook. And I think that's why we really have to keep this field where the people at the top um, are, have some, you know, Hippocratic oaths, believe in the patient and what's right for them because this is not, this is not a lipstick, this is not, this is someone's face and so it really matters. Um, the company in mode, this is the generic um, pricing list of recommendations that they give um, and I will use some of it in some of my other slides but, but obviously this is totally different because where you practice, who's doing it, there's a thousand factors that actually have to play into how you price it. So when you're an early adopter, an early innovator, and we usually are, you're playing risks. So we have no idea sometimes how successful a device will be, but if no one has it, you can start at a higher price point. And then usually a couple years later, everyone has it if it's a home run device that sometimes as the market gets saturated and the, um, um, you know, it's been commoditized, you have to then sometimes lower that price. Also, I have colleagues that are 1500, one Morpheus, and they live in the middle of Nebraska and no one does it, but people in Nebraska are on Instagram and people in Nebraska are, are looking at these treatments and they want them. Um, and so they can warrant that kind of um, monies. And then you also have states where um, this device can be run by estheticians, it can be run, uh, only be run by MDs, it can only be run by PAs. And so obviously, who's ever providing it to can um, affect the price. Um, and I've even heard of places where it's just the front desk um, person who's operating them depending on the state laws. Um, and then you have to look, are you in New York City? Um, LA and so forth where those things can also play into those prices. So I think you really have to look at that. And then you have to also look at the location of where you're located. So colleagues of mine in Manhattan, the rent on placing a price per cost for that room is so expensive that they cannot ever do anything in a treatment room that is less than, you know, a thousand dollars because if they did an eyebrow wax in a New York Manhattan Park Avenue room they'd be out of business in a, in a week so versus some place that could build a large facility for less um, uh, money so if you look really quickly here at the sample investment breakdown um, this number cost machine was a list price given to me by InMode a couple months ago. I don't know if that's changed, but I think it's pretty accurate. And the interest rates went up, they were lower later, but if you looked overall um, financing over 60 months, it interest rate of 50%. Um, I am a doomsday prepper, so I hate when um, salespeople come to my office and they're like, oh, here's the ROI, you just need to do one a month and you pay it off. So a lot of these slides are worst case scenario. They're actually given where we're overestimating. So for instance, in this slide, the warranty might be $10,000 a year. Um, however, I think most um, devices come with a warranty for a year, but I actually put the warranty in starting year one just to make it sound worse than it was. Um, total annual acquisition and maintenance costs. So overall, it might cost your practice 40,000 a year to kind of keep the device. Um, and hopefully, you know, you got an interest rate less. Some people don't even have to get it. Varies on your situation. Um, so overall, per month, you might have to do six treatments of um, Morpheus to pay off this device. So then we looked at the lowest, um, re the lowest revenue practice where they're doing um, the least amount, let me just double check, yeah. 
um, the national averages on just face treatments and the national average on faces. And it looked like across the country, the majority of practices did 10 Morpheus treatments a month. So um, with that being said, where are you located? Are you $750? Are you $1,000 a treatment? Maybe you're even lower and maybe you need to consider going up in price a little bit. Um, and total annual revenue, you can have these kind of ranges from the lower to the higher. So I didn't want to just show out $1,000 per treatment because in a lot of regions of the US, um, it's gone down. So that net profit, if you just did 10 per month, is showing in that range of 36 to 68. Um, and then you have um, a combination. Now, of course, the body treatments are, can range anywhere from 2,500 to 3,500. But I lowballed it um, and assumed that, say, you charge 750 for a face and you were doing a body treatment at the lowest end of a body treatment, you average the cost of a couple of some faces, some bodies, and maybe your average revenue is 12, um, 12.50. So again, a lower potential average, but still no matter what, very profitable if you did a combination of just three bodies a month, um, which most of us can do more than that. Oops. Um, then in this slide, we're showing um, high performing practices that maybe they're able to, to do 20 um, faces a month um, along with five bodies per month. And you can see that that annual net profit went up significantly from going from 10 um, face to 20 face and a couple more bodies um, in general. And um, uh, so, and then obviously practices where we're able to do um, 120 per month to 200 Morpheuses a month. Um, and, you know, those numbers, as you can tell, are pretty significant um, and, you know, and, and been really successful at it. So how do you get up to those numbers? Um, these are the laser rules I kind of live by. Um, like I said before, get rid of it, get rid of the device. Luckily, I can tell you Morpheus 8 is not one I sold on eBay. It's actually one that I kept and now have three of them that run all day long. Um, I always set expectations of worst case scenario. I tell them everything, downtime. I am not a, I'm a doomsday prepper. So you're probably gonna have dots. You're gonna have rash on your stomach for maybe a month to two months. Um, what do you have going on? You might not be able to put on a bikini. Um, and hopefully they don't have any of that and they look great in a, in a, in a week. But by setting the lower expectations, um, we've had huge success because any kind of um, delayed healing or anything that kind of goes on, they're, they're still very happy. Um, I have some friends and they're like, how are you, you know, growing so much? And I just say, you know, you have to spend money to make money. So you have to invest in your practice and you can't have technology that's 10 years old. And you know, I had first generation, um, a whole fleet of, of um, first generation microneedling RFs and I don't wanna bash them, but you know, I sold them for nothing and had to make investments for this you know, third generation microneedle RF. And I constantly am reinvesting in my practice and it has become part of my brand because they know that if you want the best technology and you want the most up-to-date equipment, you come to my practice. You're not gonna go and get 80s technology when you come to Lashley Medical. Um, make sure if you are an early adopter, I have been so burned. I have had endless tears from buying devices that don't work. Um, and so really call experts, call people who um, are smart and, um, and have been around a long time um, because they tend, you know, and, and kind of, uh, you know, a lot of times will we'll really help. I get phone calls all the time. Um, under promise and over deliver and choose the correct device for that patient. So I'm really good at doing psychological screenings. Um, crazy people and 
unrealistic expectations, you don't want to do anything at all to do with skin tightening. If they come in and they love surgery, please don't try and convince them to do a non-surgical treatment. Um, surgery is a gold standard for trying to get very, very dramatic, dramatic results. Um, but for those that are do not want to do surgery, I think these are great. And then for those that have, we, we work so well with so many plastic surgeons, this is a great treatment to maintain surgical results. You don't want to just have a facelift and do nothing for five years. So really trying to bring that in. And um, training of your technicians is everything. So a lot of people, I'll find out, they've been, had Morpheus 8 for a year and they're calling, crying, they're unsuccessful, and it's just they're not getting good results, they're not seeing anything, and, and I think they just kind of like did one training and launched it without really watching. In mode is amazing. Um, what Chris and Lisa has done about going all across the country to the, all the, the smartest and most successful people with these devices, and then putting it on the portal so that you can re-watch all these videos um, are immense and I you know, force our practice and any of our providers who are gonna launch these, they have to sign off and watch every single video um, because it's so helpful, off the cuff, people, unpaid you know, by the company and just real life people in the trenches injecting or real life people operating these devices um, can give some of the greatest pearls. Um, and also their clinical team is crazy strong. Some companies don't have that. Wanda's a genius. And, um, and so she'll literally call you back and tell you, hey, do this, do that. And I think that's also really helpful. Um, only sell, and Chris, Chris always calls back. Why is that? He's amazing. Um, only sell packages of three to first time patients if you can. Really, 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 really try to sell a package because Usually it takes the process and I think you will not be successful if you only, only ever do single, single um, treatments. Um, package with fillers. So if someone is really, really cachectic, um, is missing a ton of volume, really try and package this with fillers. I always do Morpheus 8 before a filler. So I'll tell them, look, you're coming in for a brand new consultation. Um, I see that you have this laxity in your neck. I cannot improve that laxity enough. I want a collagen balm you. Let me Morpheus, and then two weeks after your third Morpheus, I can come in and do fillers, or four weeks, depending on what events they have. Um, really try and include the neck if you're doing the face. Your staff, your staff is everything. So some people are so silly, they'll spend $10,000 on Google Ads, and uh, a newspaper here and a billboard here and no one in their staff has had Morpheus 8 or no one in their, ha in their practice has had toxin. And I can tell you that in our staff, um, if someone is going to be providing the Morpheus, they need models. Do not do a patient, do not do your mom or your sister, do your staff members because then when someone can look at somebody and say, and when I can sit there and say, yep, when I did Morpheus, it was spicy, but look at you know my before and afters and, and this is how I feel about it. It's a stronger endorsement than anything at all. So always treating your team, um, our, our aesthetic team, our, our nurses, all of them, they, everyone, no one is talking about someone third person doing Morpheus. It's always first person and I think that's really probably one of the most keys to being successful with this. Um, more recently, with a lot of the data coming out now, with all microneedling RF, not only with this device, but all of them, increasing density is way more important than increased power. So the more times you are pulsing and the more dense um, needle um, treatments and remodeling, the better your results. So you really have to block out enough time. It takes time to do 1,000 to 1,500 pulses. Um, pain control. Um, I am not a liar. I, I tell them this is spicy and so you have to really time this where you're not going to be mad at me um, that I didn't tell you. So come an hour early. Don't show up 10 minutes late because then you're not going to get the numbing and then you're really not going to be happy with me and I hate when people aren't happy with me. Um, and so um, get good before and after pictures because when you can really show them their neck improved or or their crow's feet or their skin texture. They're so happy and they share it with 50 billion people. Um, and then also realize you have done this amazing bomb 
and, and remodeled so much skin. You have all these channels opening. So much is happening on a, on a histologic um, standpoint that to not be using strong growth factors, to not be using very strong skincare and send them out with, with um, nothing is silly. 85% of people that leave your office after a procedure will go straight to CVS or Walgreens and buy something. So don't put a price tag to you. Don't, don't judge that, oh gosh, they just spent blank amount. You always do what's right for the patient. I am never, ever going to have a Morpheus done and go to CVS and buy some junky whatever. Um, I'm going to know that, wow, I've got like three months that whatever I put on topically is really going to help my remodeling and improve my results. So why would I do that to my neighbor and, and, and my patient who I always consider to be my friend? So, um, so I think those are kind of some of the um, um, pearls of success. And I don't know what more I can... Um, um, answer in any other questions or a team and I you guys are also amazing and and um, how you host it and Ashley get in here because you're just the bomb <laughs> well Lisa that was an amazing I mean the time just flew I just learned every time I meet see you it's been too long by the way I always learned so much amazing staff fantastic patients beautiful facilities congratulations on expansion Thank you. we really appreciate your expertise and also your honesty and passion which is really your dedication to maintaining the highest quality is, 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 is obvious. No. And we thank you for hosting. Right. Well, thanks to our Brave Matrix production, Justin Ross, Ryan Windus, uh, on behalf of myself, Wanda, uh, Lisa, and the rest of our team, and Dr. Dr. Uh, Espinosa's fantastic team here at Aesthetics. Hannah, get in here. Including my Hannah. marketing. <laughs> yes. My marketing And most of all the patients. We, rem we remind our, our viewers that this will be available, as Dr. Spinoza mentioned, on our InMode University website portal, and HERDs and other KOLs have a wealth of information for end users like we all are. Until next time, thank you and goodbye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thanks. There's a thunderstorm a brewing, and the day is turning gray. And there ain't much to say about the weather. Say the shower stall is leaking And the ceiling's falling in And I'm getting 20 bills to every land